Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of How We Are Making Our First Million, a financial literacy program focusing on sharing the motivations, methodologies, and mindsets of people who are in the process of making their first million. On today's episode, we have Emily. Emily is a 28-year-old graphic designer, dance instructor, and professional NFL cheerleader who lives in Alexandria, Virginia. She is originally from Columbus, Ohio. Emily, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, so I'm really excited about this. We're going to dive right in. First question is this. First question that we're going to talk about is this. What is your dream career? And when I say dream career, I mean, you know, what is at the intersection of what you enjoy doing, what you're good at, what people will pay you to do, and what truly fulfills you? So what are some of your ideas regarding what is your dream career or careers? <clears throat> Great question. I am lucky enough that I am currently loving what I do and I, my jobs, my careers are my passions. So I would just love to advance in my current career. I am a graphic designer for museum exhibits around the country. My company designs museum exhibits around the world. And, you know, being a professional dancer is definitely a dream career in itself. Mm. I would love to continue being a professional dancer, um, expanding to more commercial dance, being in, you know, music videos or on tour with an artist would be incredible mm. for my design career, just being higher up in my company a senior designer is my next step um potentially one day a creative director just having more say in the museums um but yeah i'm very grateful that my current jobs are like a dream to me and um i'm just looking to advance further awesome. in my positions yes That's awesome. <laughs> so what i see in that is that you're passionate about art and you're passionate about dance. Is, yes. that, is that a good summary? Art yes. and dance, oh, excellent, excellent. And so like, when was it that you discovered that passion for art and that, that passion for dance? Both have been lifelong passions. It just took a bit of figuring out how to make those into careers. Mm -hmm. I never, um, knew about the environmental design world until after I had graduated college. When I studied graphic design in college, I, I liked it, but I couldn't figure out my exact route I wanted to take because there are so many routes you can take with graphic design. So when I got into the environmental design field, I knew that this is exactly what I want to be doing. Yes, that's awesome. That is excellent. So, so tell me this, Emily, what would you describe as your ideal life 20 years from now? So, so right now you're 28 years old, right? 28 years old. So imagine your life at the age of 48 and, and what, what would be your description of your ideal life at the age of 48? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I mean, I probably won't be shaking it on the NFL field anymore, but I would still love to be involved in dance somehow, whether I'm um, at more of a director position or, um, I mean, still a choreographer at 48 would be a great opportunity. And then in terms of design, I would, love to be maybe a creative director at a company um, still in the environmental design world. Um, yeah, I'd love to just be comfortable and not, um, you know, stressed about my finances. <laughs> right, right. And then, I mean, and in terms of like, 
um, do, do, do you envision yourself? And of course, a lot can happen, right? You know, and like no one really knows. But do, as of now, do you envision yourself being 48 and living still in the DMV area? Like what, what's your? It's possible, but I have a lot of family in Ohio that every time I visit them, you know, they're asking when I'm going to move back. So we'll see if I give in one day and move back to Ohio. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And then in terms of like, you know, other areas of your life, like do, do, do you envision yourself being married? Do you envision yourself having kids? How many kids do you envision? You know, things like that. Yes. Um, I predict that I will get married. We'll see. Um, and kids, Possibly. <laughs> I have seven nieces and nephews if that doesn't work out. I do love children, but um, right now I'm not sure whether that's going to happen or not. <laughs> right, right, right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now here's the thing. Um, my vision for you, all right? My vision for you, just like my vision for, for, for each of the dancers, you know, in the company is that you'll be financially free. Right. And when I say financially free, what I mean is this, your amount of passive income is greater than your cost of living. Right. And now just to clarify, right. Look, I know it's not, it's really not about the money. It's really not about the money. It's about the mission. Right. You know, each of us are here for a purpose, for a mission. Right. We each have a, 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 a God given purpose for being here on this earth. And so, you know, money is just a tool, right? You know, and in fact, I love this, this quote that goes, money is a terrible master, but a wonderful servant. So it's like for us to truly fulfill our purpose in life, money is one of the resources that's involved, right? But it should never be our master. Our, 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 our real, you know, ultimate purpose is, is should really be that purpose to to serve to contribute to to live out the god-given purpose um why we are here you know and so so you know i think about that and i think about how that is my mission for you right as well as all the other dancers is that you guys have a clear game plan to become financially free financially free and, and it's really about the purpose is really so that you can truly live your best life, right? You know, the, your God-given purpose. I want to read to you something. Um, this is from a book called The Four-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Very powerful short story that is in that book. And here it is. It is, um, okay, so this is, a, okay, let's see. Okay, an American investment banker was at the pier of a small coastal Mexican village when a small boat with just one fisherman docked. Inside the small boat were several large yellow fin tuna. The American complimented the Mexican on the quality of his fish and asked how long it took to catch them. The Mexican replied, only a little while. The American then asked, why didn't he stay out longer and catch more fish? The Mexican said he had enough to support his family's immediate needs. The American then asked, but well, what do you do with the rest of your time? The Mexican fisherman said, I sleep a little, I mean, I, I, I sleep late, fish a little, play with my children, take siestas with my wife, Maria, stroll into the village each evening where I sip wine and play guitar with my amigos. I have a full and busy and fun life. The American scoffed. I am a Harvard MBA and I can help you. You should spend more time fishing and with the proceeds, buy a bigger boat. With the proceeds from the bigger boat, you could buy several boats. Eventually, you would have a fleet of fishing boats. Instead of selling your catch to a middleman, you would sell directly to the processor eventually opening your own cannery. You would control the product processing and distribution. You would need to leave this small coastal fishing village and move to Mexico City, then LA, and eventually New York City, where you will run your expanding enterprise. The Mexican fisherman asks, but how long will this all take? 
To which the American replied, 15 to 20 years. But what then, asked the Mexican. The American laughed and said, that's the best part. <clears throat> when the time is right, you would announce an uh, IPO and sell your company stock to the public and become very rich. You would make millions. And then the Mexican said, millions? And then what? The American said, then you would retire, move to a small coastal fishing village where you would sleep late, fish a little, play with your kids, take siestas with your wife, stroll to the village in the evenings where you could sip wine and play your guitar with your amigos. So Emily, when you hear that story, what thoughts do you have about the meaning of that story? I am reminded that, you know, our money does not ultimately bring happiness and neither does working long hours. And, you know, I don't see people's value as, you know, what their career is. I don't think someone that works more than someone else is necessarily happier or more fulfilled. Um, and, you know, if someone is comfortable doing what they're currently doing, I don't see any issue with that. Right. And ultimately, um, that the Mexican man, he's already so fulfilled and so happy and he has everything he needs. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, absolutely. You know, and it's amazing how, you know, a lot of people have the mindset that they have to, you know, like, like stress and, and be frustrated and just go through like terrible experiences in order to one day retire and then live their best life. But, but the thing is though, it's like, yo, we can do both. We can actually make money while living our best life, right? You know, doing what we love, you know? So, so yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Amazing, amazing story, amazing reflection. That's awesome, awesome. So, so Emily, here's the thing. When I talk about, um, you know, about that my goal for your life, right, is, is that your passive income will be greater than your cost of living. Um, you know, let's, let's quickly clarify what the difference between active income and passive income, right? Active income, of course, is trading time for money, all right? But passive income, passive income is where you are investing time into building systems that make you money and require either none of your time or only a small amount of your time. Now, examples of this would include like business ownership that is not dependent on your presence, right? Where you, you own a business or a part of a business where, you know, you, your, your presence is not required, right? You know, so kind of like, for example, as an example, right, you do some um, affiliate marketing, right, with, with the uh, party motivating team, right, and how, like, you're making passive income, right, and, and, you're, and, and your presence is not, um, you know, is not, is not required, right? So, so yeah, so th that's an example, right? Uh, another example of affiliate marketing, another example, stock market investing, right, index funds, and then also, like, like Roth IRAs and stuff, right? Um, real estate investing, right? You know, in terms of like maybe private lending or real, uh, rental properties or house hacking, right? And also intellectual property, right? An online course, a book, right? Things of that nature. So, so here's what I'm getting at, right? So my vision is that, you know, instead of having to always use your active income to pay for your cost of living, I want every dancer to, have, to, to, to focus on acquiring assets that will generate passive income to pay for their cost of living, right? So what ideas do you have for assets that you can acquire that will actually pay for your cost of living? What are some ideas? So some ideas for passive income? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, like over time, I mean, of course, we all start off making active income, right? But as we go along, you know, it's, it's key to really think about ways in which we can build these systems, we, we, ways in which we can acquire assets that will generate passive income. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I do have a 401k, so I'm awesome. have a little of that as a start. Um, when and you, by the way, with your 401k, do they match? Some companies will match the contribution. Do you know they match? I all? know that my previous company did. Okay. I'm not positive about my current company. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. That's just something to, to look into, you know, to see if they match. Because if they don't match, there might be a better retirement vehicle for you to use. But if they match, definitely take advantage of the match up into the match, like up to the point that they match. So like, for example, some companies might match the first 3% or the first 5% or whatever, but definitely take, because that's like free money. If they're, if they're matching, they're, it's like free money. But if they're not matching, then, you know, it might be good to look for some other options. Okay. But anyway, so, so you got the 401k. Now you have the 401k for your current um, position. And then for your previous position, what happened to that old 401k? It's just, just continuing to grow, I guess, right? It's just continuing to grow. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. 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 When so, you said um, about publishing a book, that's actually uh, publishing a children's book is actually one of my um, on my bucket list. I guess we could say. That's awesome. Um, that's awesome. You know that. You know. By the way, that's funny you say that because on the previous episode of the show, Hannah mentioned the same thing about a children's really? book. Had, had you ever talked to her about that at all? Maybe we. She drives me to practice, so it's possible that I sparked her interest. I'm not sure. <laughs> that's awesome. She mentioned it as one of her things, a children's book. That's awesome. Oh, that's great. Now, in terms of the children's book, do you have like a like a particular angle in mind? Okay. I definitely want to either do, you know, women's empowerment or, um, you know, being kind to everyone or just some uplifting message to kids or girls or minorities or some sort of marginalized community but i know that's a little vague so i still have to narrow down the topic but yeah, sure sure now i'm curious uh, on 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 why why children and not and just what like 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 why focus just on children and not maybe other versions for other age ranges that's true i guess just because i love reading with my nieces and nephews uh, I know how special it is and I always buy them books um for Christmas every year which you know maybe they would I think they might rather have toys but I get excited buying them books <laughs> all right, right love it love it love it that's awesome so a book so tell me this Emily what would be your target to have a first draft done of the book right because you know how it is in life right if we don't have goals then life has a way of just passing us by, right? Absolutely, yes. I definitely need a deadline. I work that way. <laughs> Let's see, first draft. Let's say 35. <laughs> At the age of 35? Yes. Okay, age 35. All right, so that's uh, seven years. Yes. Seven years from now, all right, seven years from now. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so we got the four hundred one k right retirement. And you got um, uh, a book, a book idea. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. And then of course you got like affiliate marketing opportunities like on the side that will like come up, you know, right? Okay, good, good, good. Affiliate marketing. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome, awesome. So now, um, let's see where are we. Okay, now. Oh, okay. What is your blueprint for home ownership or if, if ever you even want to buy a home? Now, you know, home ownership is kind of interesting topic, right? Because, you know, our culture, like there's a lot of pressure for people to buy a home. But here's the thing, right? You have to think, you have to be careful because you have to realize a lot of people benefit from people buying homes. And so, of course, there's a lot of people that are pressuring and, and like, like the media kind of promotes it. But really, if you buy a home and you're not ready to buy a home, that home won't be an asset. It'll be a liability, you know? And so I'm really, I'm, 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 a, I'm a mortgage loan officer as well, right? And so, but I'm very passionate about making sure that people don't buy a home until they are ready to buy a home, until it really makes sense. So if a person's not like, for example, I mean, and there's like several different factors, but like one of the things is this, 
how long do you plan to stay in that particular area? Because if you're not planning to stay in that particular area for more than like five years, then you might not want to buy a home, right? You know, it's like different things like that. And also too, it's like, are you really financially stable? Because if you buy a home and you're not really financially stable, that home can easily become a huge liability, you know? And so, and so there's a lot of different uh, things. But so um, with, with your situation, what are your ideas about home ownership? How do you feel about that? Yes. So I don't know whether I'm going to stay here or move back to Ohio. Um, you know, on my own right now, I definitely don't feel comfortable purchasing a home. Um, you know, I feel secure in my job, but I think that a lot of people do and still end up losing their jobs. So, um, yeah, at this moment, it still scares me to death and I don't feel ready, but I definitely would love to own a home at some point in my 30s. Um, you know, decorating a home just sounds like the most fun thing in the world to me <laughs> as a designer. Um, so at some point in my 30s, I would love to own a home, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> yes, yeah. Now, here's the thing. So even though, you know, there's a lot of time between now and, 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 and you know, and like your mid 30s or whatever, right? But here's the thing. It's so important to start now to do things that will prepare you for five, six, seven, eight years down the line, right? You know, and with the um, home ownership, like, like blueprint set, right? There's, there's, there's three major things, right? Number one is that down payment, right? You want to be able to have a good down payment, you know, because you go in having a lot of equity, right, in the home and, and everything, right? Um, and so one is down payment. And, and even thinking about down payment is that, well, that's, you know, savings, right? And so it's so important to build your savings, like to start now to even like set aside, like in your budget, kind of set aside some, some, some money for building up that, that future home purchase, you know? So um, down payment is one. And, 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 you know, and then that's all about personal finance of like, you know, tracking your, your finances so that you have control over your finances and everything. Right. And, you know, doing a budget, like, you know, now number two is credit score, credit score. Now, a lot of times people don't start to really think about their credit score until they are almost at the point of like trying to buy a home right but it's so important to start early to think about your credit score and to nurture your credit score now you know so i'm a mortgage loan officer and so you know i see this all the time and and, and here's the thing two so there, there's several different things that impact your credit score and by the way when i'm saying credit score i mean the fico score the the, the score that that's the most popular regarding mortgages home mortgages there's two major things that, that will impact your FICO score. Number one is your payment history. And number two is your credit utilization. So payment history, meaning paying your bills on time. So basically, you know, it's so important to pay your bills on time because just one little late payment can actually really cause your credit score to drop significantly, right? Um, so pay on time. And number two is this, is credit utilization where, you know, out of all of your available credits, you always want to only be using a small portion, like, like under 30% of your available credits, right? Because that's one of the things that they will look at um, when they are evaluating and, and giving you a credit score. Um, so now here's the thing, to, to, for that credit utilization piece, right? Some, some tips, right, is this. Um, if you have a credit card, what you wanna do is every so often, call your credit card company and ask them to increase the limit on your credit card. Because if you have a higher limit on your credit card, that means that your credit utilization will, will decrease as long as you keep your charges around the same amount, right? And so, and then that will boost your credit score, right? And then, and then of course, another way of doing it is like to pay, you know, just make sure that you pay off um, debt so that your, your, your credit utilization is, is lower, right? 
and everything. And just make sure you don't, you know, like, like never max out on a card and, you know, they keep it low. So anyway, what, um, now here's the thing too. Here's another thing. It's interesting talking about credit cards, right? Because I'm also a fan of Dave Ramsey. Have you heard of Dave Ramsey? No, uh, really? I'm not sure. I really, you know, he's like a financial guru type of guy for personal okay. finance. He, you know, yeah, he has a show, he has a podcast and stuff, but anyway, he talks a lot about personal finance. But he's like, you know, he's really big on like having people not use credit cards, cut up the credit cards, all that kind of stuff, which I mean, for a lot of people, you know, for a lot of people that can't handle a credit card, they need to stay away from credit cards. All right. But here's the thing. If you can handle it, right, then, you know, handling a credit card responsibly can really benefit your life because it can really help you get a very high credit score. Right. So, and it's a very, very sensitive topic. Um, and so let's dive into that, you know? So like, like, uh, do you own a credit card? Yes. I okay. Have, um, two. <laughs> two. Okay. Gotcha. You, gotcha. You. Okay. So two credit cards and what, what, what's the, what's the balances? I mean, like what, what, what's the credit limits on those credit cards? The credit One limits. is just $500, which I definitely should ask to increase. Yes. Yes. Um, I know my mom, that was like my first credit card that my mom helped me set up. Um, I barely use it because it doesn't have many rewards or anything. I mostly use my Penn Fed credit card, which is $9,000 limit. Okay. And yes, I get it back down to $0 every month. Oh, good. Um, oh, so, so every month you pay the full balance off, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect, excellent, excellent, that's great, that's great. Now, have you ever, okay, so on the $500 one, you have never asked your credit card for an increase? No, okay. I didn't okay. know that was a thing, so that's a you great know. step. <laughs> perfect, perfect, okay, so yeah, so that, that's a good good action item, right? Yeah. Um, and then now, what about for the $9,000 one? Did you, and you, you never asked for that either, right? Uh-uh, okay. I have not. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, perfect, perfect. Great action items to, to ask for those. Now, have you checked your credit score um, like now, you know, some bank accounts like Capital One will like give you some type of score. Now, by the way, those type of scores that they give you, I mean, it's not totally, totally accurate, but it, it is it is in the ballpark, you know, so it, it's kind of good to to like monitor that. But just know that that that, that score is not really the official credit score. Right. But anyway, so do do you um, have you checked in a while? Um, my, this app says it's 798. Okay, that's good. <laughs> seven ninety eight. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good score. Yeah, yeah. yeah seven ninety eight. Um, and so, um, and so now keep in mind that's like the ballpark. But yeah, so I mean, so obviously, you know, you have been very responsible <laughs> with your use of credit. You know, for you know for that. So that's great. That's great. And so, um, so yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see, like when you ask for those um, credit limit increases, right? It's going to be over time. It's going to be interesting to see how your credit score even goes up even higher, you know, and everything. So that is great. That's great. You're almost right at that 800 mark, you know, that's great. That's great. So um, let's see. So now, okay, so we're talking about down payment and talk about credit score and then stable income. Stable income is another big thing. Now, so when you get to that point in which you're going to apply for a mortgage, what they're going to look for, very important, they want to see at least two years of stable income. They want to see that, that you've been working in the same industry for at least two years. So it doesn't necessarily need to be the same exact job, but they want to see that you're in the same field of work for at least two years, you know? Now, how long have you been at, at in, in that field of work with the, with the graphic design business? I mean, the graphic design work. I have since I graduated college, so over five years, over okay. six years. Yeah. Okay, so. okay. And, <laughs> that's good. And then, and then with that company that you work for, so you just recently moved to, to the DMV, right? Okay, you yeah. started that. Okay, good, good, good. So you're building, and, and it's, it's like a nine to five type of, you know? Okay, good, yeah, good, good. Working remote, but yes. Right, 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 gotcha, gotcha. That's good, that's good. Um, that's great. So like that whole career management piece, you know, is a big piece with that, you know? And um, that's great. And it sounds like you, 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 you really enjoy the company, you love what you do, so that's great. So you're really building, you know, that's great. You're building great work history, you know? So that's awesome, awesome, awesome. So. 
Now, um, now zero base budget. All right. So here's the thing. A lot of times when people hear the word budget, right, it, it, it causes different reactions. But here's my thing, right? When I say budget, really what I'm just getting at is basically, you know, a budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went, right? And so it's all about just tracking your money, tracking your money. And then the starting point for being able to do a good budget is to first to become aware of what your current spending directions are, right? So let's do this activity where we're gonna go through and we're gonna just use approximate numbers, right? Just approximate numbers, round numbers, right? Um, you know, it's not important to be exact, but just ballpark figures, right? So the first thing is the monthly, what, what would you say is your approximate monthly income? Like rounded. Uh, let's see. And I know that with you, you, you got the steady income, but also you got like the side businesses, right? Like even like with the cheerleading and that, which is seasonal, right? Yes. And, that, and then the party motivating and stuff like that. And then like some random dance stuff that comes up and like, you know, Zoom, Zoom, like gigs and stuff. So all that. But yeah. So well, what would you say? Like if you, if you tried to average it out for the whole year, what would you say that monthly? Let's see. I would say 5,000. Okay, so if we say a round number of 5,000, right? Now, what would be some of the bills, right? So um, one, one easy one to you know, throw in is the rent, right? So what's yeah. the rent? So um, I'm moving next month, but currently my rent is 2,000. Okay. So I, it's gonna be, 1300 soon which i'm very excited about but okay well, years, it's, 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 so it's next month okay that's fine let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's do the 1300 then. okay great <laughs> yeah, yeah. so are you moved now with, with that move like is it like 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 why are you moving or why did you decide to move save money oh, to save money right i got you <laughs> i got you now is it a different arrangement like are you having roommates or anything or anything or no no i'll still be living alone it's just going to be a studio um older building less amenities but much cheaper rent so i'm very excited about that <laughs> yes 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 this is amazing yeah that that amount every month you know i'm saying to have that extra money in your budget that that makes that's huge that's really huge okay so we have that as rent now what's another cell phone bill um just a round number yes I'm really bad about paying my parents my cell phone bill. So I've definitely let a few slip by. <laughs> oh, but I am family plan. Oh, you're, yeah. you're, you got a situation. Oh, I see. I Venmo my mom every month. Um, I, I think it's $45. Okay. All right. 45 cell phone. Okay. All right. Cool. And also, if you could be writing this as I, as I go, that'd be awesome. Okay. All right. So we got 5,000 income ballpark and then. Uh, minus uh, 1300 rent minus $45 cell phone bill. Um, okay. What would you say is like a round number for your grocery bill when you buy groceries? Now I'm not talking about eating out. That would be a separate yeah. category. I'm just talking about groceries where you're like, you know, buying it for the, for the home. Yes. I would say maybe 50 a week. 50 a week. Okay. So then therefore 200 groceries. Okay. Groceries. And then um, what about like eating out stuff? When you're eating out, which it includes, are you a coffee drinker? Do you drink a lot of coffee? You do? Okay. All right. So including now, wait, are you, is it, is it so significant that we need to make that a separate category? Oh, no. <laughs> That's included in my groceries. Oh, oh the call. Oh, oh, you mean you mean you mean you buy coffee and cook I, it and do yeah. it at home? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I thought I I meant like do 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 you get coffee out like at Starbucks and stuff? Okay. Question. No, mostly just make it at home. So okay. 
out. Yeah, so eating out. Um, probably another, probably also 200 a month. Okay, oh, okay. Eating out, 200, okay. Um, and then, of course, you, you, you don't go shopping for clothes every month, of course, right? But if you were to average it out, right, for the whole year, what would be the monthly kind of budget for clothes? I would say maybe 50. I really don't buy clothes very often. <laughs> All right. When I do, I buy secondhand clothing, so it's cheaper. <laughs> okay, okay, awesome, awesome. And then now in terms of like personal care products, right? Like, you know, like just like toothpaste and stuff. So would that all fit under your $200 grocery budget? Like, like skincare, makeup, all that stuff? I don't know because we do for the dance team get 75 extra dollars a month for personal items. Oh, okay, so that kind of covers, okay. So I guess that might go into my income, um, okay. but right. I do also use my HSA card, which I put forty dollars a month on. Um, oh, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, good. So, okay, now, now, well, uh, before we jump into like the savings and stuff, and then the and the insurance. Well, no, it's insurance. It's like the well health savings plan. Oh, okay, got it. It's a health savings plan account, right? Where it's kind of like. So there's a few that don't, are not familiar with it. So it's a situation with your health insurance where you can actually put money into the HSA for future health related costs, right? Okay. Yes. And right. it also applies for like personal items like toothpaste and things oh, like that. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now, is it is it after tax dollars or, or, or pre tax? You know what I'm saying? Like, does it come straight from your paycheck? It comes or straight from your paycheck. So, so you're not, so you don't have to pay taxes on. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, yeah, we can put that in. So, so how much was that HSA? I do forty a month. Forty a month. Okay. All right. So that's forty. All right. HSA account. Okay. Now, do you um? So do you do you have health insurance through your job? Yes. Okay, and that's just out of your pay, like your your paycheck, right? Okay, so 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 the five thousand is pretty much after you know all that. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, all right. So that's that. Um, what would be? Let's see. What about stuff like haircuts and nails and stuff? Would I guess that covers like that 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 seventy five a month kind of covers that stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get my hair cut like twice a year and rarely get my nails got done. I'm a very low maintenance professional dancer. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. All right, cool. So are we are we missing anything, do you think? Or do you think this pretty much covers, you know? I guess I would say, you know, I pay maybe 75 for Wi-Fi. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, okay. Oh, I see. So you pay. Okay. So with, with your situation, what the the, the 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 new situation, thirteen hundred dollar rent, but then on top of that, it doesn't include the utilities, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. And so um, you said how much for Wi-Fi? I believe it's seventy five. Okay, seventy five Wi-Fi. Now, what about like? And I guess it's hard since you know it's a new situation. Um, it's hard to estimate what the uh, like the water and the electric bill might be. I think that water will be just ten dollars, and I believe electric. Well, my current electric, I pay about sixty, so maybe we could. Just or maybe around there too. Okay, sixty uh, electric. Okay. I don't own a car, so that's nice. one large thing I don't pay for. That's right. So in terms of public transportation costs, that's what, true. What would that be? Hmm. Maybe how much do I pay for the metro? Let's see. Maybe just like 20 a month. Okay. Maybe 20 a month. All right. So 20 a month. Uh for metro. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. 
Um, now, what about um, vacate like like trips, trips like um, if you were to average? So of course, like you're not going on trips every month, but if you're averaging out the trips, I guess trips back home and stuff, and maybe small vacations. Yes. Let's see. Also, too, the trips, we, we can include that into, like, I guess we could say entertainment and trips. So, like, if you ever go to concerts or go out to, yeah, like, events where you have to pay, stuff like that. Okay. Maybe another 100 a month. 100 a month for all, all that kind of stuff. Um, like, yeah. So, uh, trips and entertainment. Trips and entertainment. um that's that and then now certain subscriptions right which i guess yeah that could fall like subscriptions can fall like do you have netflix um i use my sister's oh okay, okay. So she saves me there <laughs> okay, right. or any other type of um subscription service for anything um dropbox or something or you know i do pay um 80 a month for um, my virtual workout subscription classes. <laughs> ah, okay, awesome, awesome. Eighty dollar uh, virtual, uh, yeah, workouts. Okay, workout, yeah, exercise. Okay, awesome. Excellent. All right. Um, anything that we're missing? so no okay um we should throw in another category just called miscellaneous okay like miscellaneous expenses right so what would you think is a reasonable amount for monthly miscellaneous expenses i don't know another 50 maybe 50 okay all right mm. oh, yeah. <laughs> like like this would you know yeah okay so mis miscellaneous Right. Um, yeah. Random stuff that might come up like, you know, um, yeah. Okay. So um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. So now what about, um, oh, okay. Now in terms of, uh, now you're not really um, now oh, in terms of debt, right? So, so obviously there's no like, car loan right or anything right okay what about student loan debt any student loan debt? Nope. no okay that's a blessing that's a blessing <laughs> um and then there's no credit you have two credit cards if you pay them all off every month right oh you're good so so you have no debt at all i have no debt okay okay that's a blessing that's a blessing no debt. <laughs> okay. so no debt now here's the thing um let's total these up okay. all right and and um, I'm going to total it up and then I'll have you also total it up and compare our numbers. Let's see. Okay. Nice number. You got you got okay. So you got a total of 2230. Yes. For your expenses. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And then that way, so then that means using budget numbers, you should have around an extra two thousand seven hundred seventy dollars. 
extra each month, right? Um, does that feel like you have an extra two thousand? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, well, you know what? Question for you: When you said the five thousand, were you meaning gross income, or is that take home? So, for my design job, my take home is four thousand. So I guess maybe since my dance job is not year round, maybe I should make that number lower. Um, I feel like maybe 4,500 is more accurate. Okay, so if you do 4,500, All right, so then that means it's like, you know, I mean, estimated number around 2270, right? But do you feel as though you have an extra 2270 a month? Well, currently my rent is $700 oh, more, but true. I have been saving about $1,000 a month and I've just been putting it in my savings account and not sure what else to do with it so all right all right, all right excellent 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 okay all right so you've been so that's great so already you you've having you know you, you you've experienced excess and then now with with you know next month when you move you're gonna have even more of an excess yes now here's the thing you mentioned about the retirement right so you have a retirement you have that old 401k you have the current 401k um other than and then you have a savings account right and then do you also have a checking account Yes. Oh, yeah. Checking account. Um, other than that, do you have any other accounts? No, that's it. Uh, I do not. Oh, no. wait. Yes, I do. <laughs> I have a CD okay. that I put $5,000 into last year. I believe it's only a two year CD. Okay. Okay. Do you know what the, in do you remember what the interest rate on that CD is? I think it was. Is it usually like point something percent or is it usually a whole number? Well, well, if it's a CD, I mean, it's a, it's a real, you know, uh, it's very, it's a bank CD. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, like for example, a savings account, right? Some banks will pay interest on a savings account, but usually it's like maybe a point something, you know, it's very low. CDs yeah. also be very low, you know, maybe one, 2%, something like that, you know? Yes, so, anyway. I, know. I think it was... I I don't remember. Okay, no worries, don't worry. But anyway, I know it, it has to be something kind of low. Yeah. But I mean, the good thing is, it was big. low. <laughs> huh? Was that? It definitely was low. I was like, this okay. is very. But it, low. I mean, here's the thing, though. I mean, in in managing your savings, right? Like, you never want to invest, um, like money that you might need, like in your emergency fund, right? So, oh, by the way you know, what, what should be your emergency fund, right? Right, I mean, think about it, especially coming off of like the whole COVID thing, you know, I mean, like, as we know, like things can happen, you know, job losses or, or whatever, you know, different things could happen where you need access to cash, emergency cash, right? I mean, you never wanna be living paycheck to paycheck, right? And obviously yeah. you're not living paycheck to paycheck, but let's clarify what should be your emergency fund like what what amount should be so would you say i would say for most people it should be either somewhere between three to six months of your living expenses Definitely. Um, and so what and you know emergency funds will add a lot of like peace of mind you know knowing that you got cash just in case something crazy happens or just in case something comes up that you want to really you know spend money on so what, what would, how many months of living expenses do you want to have as your emergency fund? I would say just having 6,000 at all times for my emergency fund would be comfortable, but. Um, okay, now 6,000 wouldn't really cover, almost covers three months. Okay. You know? So, or like seven or eight <laughs> right 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 yeah yeah i mean i'm thinking uh, like bare minimum if you want to try to you know i was thinking to cover at least three months at, at a minimum mm -hmm. right so 
so yeah, so maybe like, um, so like 7,000 say for um, emergency fund, right? All right, 7,000 emergency, yeah, emergency fund. All right, so emergency fund is that, that, that like cash that you have readily available, right? So it could be in like a savings account or, or maybe you're, you're making a, you know, a little bit of interest maybe or a money market account, something that's very, you know, very, you know, something that's really safe, but the drawback is that, you know, you're not making a lot of interest on it, right? Um, you, you probably don't want to put your emergency fund in a CD, of course, right? Because, you know, CDs, you know, you, you tie it up for a while, right? So, um, all right, so that's good. So you get the emergency fund. Um, that's awesome. Now, here's the thing. Something to think about, though, too, is because you do have access, right? And then you have, no, so by the way, do you already now have an emergency fund or are you building an emergency fund? I already have that. You already have that. Okay, good, good. good. So that, that, that's set. You already have the emergency fund. So here's the thing is that something to think about is, to think about maybe starting to like invest in like a mutual fund, like, mm -hmm. like, like, for example, index funds. Have you heard of index funds at all? They're a type of mutual fund. Not really. I mean, it's like I learn about these things okay. and then they just fall out of my yeah. head. <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right. So, so here's the thing. I mean, I'm thinking a good action item would be to look into mutual funds, especially, and the reason why I bring up index funds is because Index funds are a type of mutual funds where the, the cost is very low, like, like to the, 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 at the fees for in index funds are very low. So, and you look at like these like companies like Vanguard or like um, Vanguard or Fidelity, right? These are some major um, mutual fund companies. T. Rowe Price is another one, but I really recommend um, Vanguard and Fidelity, right? As, as the top two, but look into something called index funds. And it's, it's you know, uh, mutual funds because you're, you're, the interest rate is so much higher. Now, of course, this is for the long term. And of course, the stock market goes up and down. But here's the thing over the long run, it always goes up, always goes up, right? So, and you have time on your hands, right? And everything. So, and if you think about the power of compound interest, it's like, wow, you want to start investing when you're young, right? Because you want that compound interest to work for you because you want to get to that level. I mean, like in order to see, here's the thing, in order to get to that level where your passive income is greater than your active income, right? And, you know, and, 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 and basically, you know, to get to that level where your passive income is covering your cost of living, you have to invest like starting like now into like the stock market um, or, you know, real estate or a business, you know, but the, the stock market is a very easy type of investment um, because it can be very structured, right? And everything. So that's something to look into. And, and it'd be great if you set up a, to, a way to auto invest because that way you don't have to think about it. You just, every month you are automatically investing into a mutual fund, right? And it's just amazing how it, it, it just, over time, it just really, really grows because of the compound interest and everything. So, and also too, by making it an auto, oh, here's another thing too. Oh, and here's, oh, big thing. So when you get pay raises, also like next month, when you, you know, are able to cut your um, rent expense, right? You want to make sure you are, you are aware of something called lifestyle creep. Lifestyle creep means when your income goes up, right? A lot of times when people's income goes up, they will just automatically increase their cost of living, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. You don't want to feel like, oh, since you have all this extra money, you just find a way to spend it on stuff, right? You know what I'm saying? But you want to make sure you're, you're aware to keep your, I mean, of course, have fun, enjoy life, but continue, continue, just like you're doing, continue to keep your cost of living down so that you have, you know, so you can maximize the excess and make sure that you start to invest, invest in a mutual fund because you want that money to work, start working for you. Because think about, it, I mean, 28 years old, I mean, like I'm 42, right? So um, was that 14 years? I'm 14 years older than you. And, and so like, my thing is if you were to invest, start investing. And I mean, like if you have this excess, I mean, if you can start investing at least $300 a month, then by the time you're my age, by the time you're 42, you know, and definitely like 20 years from now, you know, by the age of 48, 
you will be in such an amazing financial situation, you know? And so, uh, and I also encourage you to really ask people like family members, do, 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 do you have like ask your parents and also you might have like a, like a cousin or an uncle or an aunt who's into like an expert into like stock market and investing stuff, you know? So it's good to be like, even ask them about their recommendations, you know, for stuff, you know? So Thanksgiving is coming up. I got the topic ready. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very good. Very good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. Because that's the, and that's the whole thing. Like everyone says, you know, if they could go back in time, they would have started early to invest, mm -hmm. you know? And so, yeah. That's excellent, excellent, excellent. So now, um, let's see. All right, so now as we're ending, as we're, as we're ending, we're about to end. Um, question for you, question for you. Um, how was this session useful to you? How was it useful to you? You know, I got some tips such as increasing my credit limit and looking into the index fund. It also, um, reminded me or reinforced things that I know I should be doing, like keeping track of my budget, but I am very bad about doing. Um, it was comforting to hear that, um, you know, I have a good credit score and, you know, I have an emergency fund saved up mm -hmm. and I guess also inspiring and um, gives me hope that I feel like I can be in a good financial situation in 20 years to yes yes take my siestas during the day and <laughs> right. I'm doing it for the siestas that's right, that's right. That's <laughs> I love right. sleep <laughs> that's right that's right that's awesome that's awesome you know I mean I mean can you imagine being in a situation where it's like you don't have to work because your passive income is covering your cost of living. And so you're just really going to work because you really do want to, right? You don't have to be there, you know, and all that. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So now what about this? Um, what did you like about the style of this, of this show, you know, because it's a new show. So I wanted to get some feedback about the style. What, what do you think? It feels comfortable and casual and, you know, with a, scary overwhelming topics like this you know you made it approachable and yeah it was just i think easy to follow and go through the time went by really quickly <laughs> i know i did it really did yes yes and now my last question is this and 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 you have kind of already hit on it you know um uh multiple times but but just to kind of really like confirm it really make that commitment, you know what I'm saying? So we establish that accountability, right? Because I, I would love to have you back on the show maybe in like, you know, a couple months, right? Have you back on it. You know what? It'd be great to have you on the show right before the new year starts, you know? That would be a really cool time, you know? Have you back on the show. But here's the thing. Here's my last question for you is this. What, what new goals then? All right, just to clarify, what would be the new goals that you are committed to as a result of this session? New goals would be to, I guess those action items you gave yes. me. Yes. Okay, um, and, 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 and real quick, if, if, we, if we go through those action items, yes. Yeah. So call my credit card companies to increase my limit so that my credit score will go up. Look into, index funds mutual funds talk about it at thanksgiving with my relatives <laughs> um look into also if my company matches my 401k because i do not remember um and i guess just keep thinking about forms of passive income and where what my next steps are with my career yes. um, to just be thinking ahead yes i love it i love wow powerful emily powerful power. i'm so excited <laughs> because i know that there's so many other young people that are in your same position you know and everything so this is such such a great episode awesome and let me just say that i did live paycheck to paycheck until a couple years ago 
So I don't want this to be discouraging to anyone because I did not have my emergency fund until I was 27. Wow. And wow. that was last year. So wow. yes, I don't want anyone to be discouraged because I I lived paycheck to paycheck until I was late into my 20s. So I know what it's like. <laughs> yes, that's all. That is so very inspiring and uplifting. That is great. That is awesome. That's awesome. Well, Emily, thank you so much for being on the show. And I look forward to having you back on the show in a couple months. Thank so, you so much. My pleasure. Have a good one. You too. All right. Bye.